the cornerback opposite James. You've used a bunch of different guys. Yadam, Ballantyne when she was here, Ryan Lewis. Is it sustainable to just keep kind of having a different guy there at cornerback two all the time, or do you guys need to settle on one guy? No, I expect all the guys to play, Ryan. I really do. Um, so there may be certain matchups that we may favor a certain guy for a skill set. There may be certain positions on the field, whether it's red area versus, you know, backed up or in the field. There may be more of an early down guy, third down guy. So every game brings a little bit of different element of how you're trying to match up the opponent. Uh, to me, I have no issue at all with playing guys at any position and rotating them on through. As long as you're getting production, we're keeping guys fresh. We expect everyone at the game to contribute. So, you know, in terms of the way I view the game, no, I have no issue with that at all. How do you think Ike has played these last couple of games? Because he went from playing a lot to playing not much at all to now playing a lot again. How do you think he's performed this second stint? I've seen a lot of improvement from Ike. Yeah, this is a guy that's really worked tirelessly through practice. He's really competed hard for us and shown a lot of things in practice. Um, and I think he got a shot in the game, and he went out there, and he's been making plays for us. So, yeah, he's done a lot of really good things right now that have helped us. Um, and, you know, he'll keep playing for us as well, as will Harp and, you know, we get Ryan Lewis back and a number of other guys. Thanks, Joe. Doug. Hey, Joe. Uh, when you made the tra the decision to transition Gates to center, that was probably with the thought that you'd have a full off season, a full training camp, preseason games. Curious, was there any reservations about giving a, a new center, like throwing him right in the way he had to get thrown in? And then, how do you feel like he's developed through the season? Well, I'll start the back end part first. I think he's developed, you know, really well. I see a lot of improvement on a weekly basis from Nick. Look. Going from playing guard and tackle into center is a completely different animal. The multiples on your plate, the command you have to have, the calls, uh, even just the different mechanics of having to snap before you block. These are things you have to learn how to do. And there's a reason a lot of guys play center throughout their entire career, up through high school, college, and then to the NFL. It is a different type of position. Um, I think he's done a really good job of advancing in that. I see a lot of promise going forward with him. I'm pleased with how he's playing. I see improvement every week. Now to the first part of it in terms of, yes, obviously – Initially, we saw that as a having a full off season, full training camp. But like with everything else, uh, that wasn't going to waver when the you know, pandemic hit. It wasn't going to change our course of action in terms of how we're going to get this team ready. We just decided, hey, we're going to adapt or die. We're going to get ready. And there's going to be some growing pains with a lot of guys. We've got to move forward. Thanks, Joe. Canavan. Joe, on Monday you talked about one of the things you've learned is to juggle time. And so you have enough time for your defense and offense. I tend not to be the most organized guy in the world. Why would you put yourself through that? Or is that just how you have to be to be a coach? Yeah, I think as far as being the head coach, I have to know what's going on on all three sides of the ball. And I can't know what's going on without putting in the tape time to learn the opponent on the front end. I can't you know, know what's going on without really watching our teams at practice and studying what we're doing and reviewing all the practice tape and the game tape and understanding our personnel of how we're using them. So. To me, it's just part of the responsibility of what you have to do to be effective. I don't know how I could help the team if I don't know what's going on. So that's just an emphasis for me. Hey, Joe, what's your message to your players during this bye week? How do you balance staying focused and keeping the momentum going with taking a much-deserved break? Yeah, I mean, I'll go back to the momentum question first. It's yeah, I don't really believe that exists, um, to be honest with you. Uh, nothing that we did against Philadelphia or Washington – is going to help us against Cincinnati. We have to learn from what we did wrong and make corrections. But we got to come back on Monday and have a good, strong practice. Uh, to be honest with you, obviously, with we've gone virtual this week with some of the COVID protocols going back in the intensive protocol. So that's changed a little bit of our plans, what they were going to be on the field. Initially, we were going to do more of a walkthrough. And uh, some of the younger guys, practice squad, and some of the younger you know, rookies and all, we're going to have a more intensive practice when the walkthrough is over. And then today, Wednesday, would have been a on-the-field padded practice for the entire team to get out there, pop it around, you know, work on some new schemes, concepts, make sure we correct some things came up through the season. Now we're working virtually to go ahead and have meetings and address those things right there. But we've got to have a good day on Monday. And in terms of the momentum, the only momentum I think we'll be able to go ahead and transfer and create is how we practice and how we play. So we have to come back next week ready to go. I'm curious, 10 weeks into the season, you know, after, after watching the tape of all these games and, you know, coaching through them, what's the biggest thing you've learned about your team and where do you guys have to get better down the stretch? We've got to continue improving across the board on fundamentals. I think that's something you always have to improve on. You can never think we've arrived there. I think sometimes the mistakes you make as a team as you get to a certain point in the season and it's very scheme-oriented and you fall away from what you worked hard on the training camp in terms of fundamentals and basics. And ultimately, that's really what always makes the difference anyway. We talk about turnovers, penalties, mental errors. 
those are things that are going to be the true deciding factors within games. You know, in terms of our team, you know, we, we hoped early on that we could develop a tough culture without knowing these players early on. And I've seen that with our guys. You know, our guys are – it's a team full of very resilient guys, uh, very mentally tough guys. I've seen these guys come to work week in and week out. You know, no matter what the noise on the outside was, they come in focused, they come in determined, and they play together. And I've seen a group of guys moving in the same direction, make a lot of improvement. I'm proud of how they practice. I'm proud of how it's shown up on tape and games. And I think that transfers directly in how we practice to how we play. It seems like that's really kind of taken off over the last two or three weeks, especially on defense. It seems like you're playing a more physical brand of football than maybe you started. Um, why do you think that is? And do you think maybe that's just kind of snowballing when wins and confidence beget more wins and confidence? Or is there more to it than that? Well, I think when you practice with good execution and you're confident what you're doing schematically, you can play more aggressive. And when you demonstrate across the board that you have 11 guys on the field who truly understand the schemes, the concept, and what we're doing, then you can play aggressive by not worrying about the guy next to you and what he's doing. So I think right now we're at a point our guys have really learned and progressed within the schemes and the concepts are working. They've really done a good job week by week adapting to different game plans and how they fit and understand not only their responsibility, but how the guy next to them has to play as well. And when you understand that, you can play more aggressive. So that's probably why some of that's starting to show up the way we want it to on tape. Do you look into how teams, you know, the data, how teams come into a buy, how teams go out of a buy? This is your first time being a head coach at this. I mean, is there something that, that you can do maybe better than someone else taking your team out of a buy that could give you an advantage? Yeah, I think you have to look at what you do well and what you're deficient on, what you have to improve on. I think the biggest thing coming out of a buy, um, other than getting a little bit, maybe some guys back health-wise, Paul, or getting, you know, some things adjusted schematically is, You've just got to come out and correct things that you've made mistakes on and go forward with. You may have a new wrinkle you try to work in here or there. We do look at teams coming out of buys. Uh, obviously, the last two weeks we played teams come off of buys. To me, it's important to look at those teams based on what they've done in the past coming out of a buy, what kind of adjustments do they use, uh, what does their game plan look like, that game out of the buy, different than it was the previous games before a buy, how many schematic differences do they have, you know, is it a more aggressive mindset, what, what do they do? So you want to put all those things into account just to anticipate what your opponent may do against you. You know, for us specifically, I think the biggest, you know, the biggest mistake people think is when you come out of a bye, you're automatically fresher and faster and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a myth. You know, it's, it's you got to come out and all that matters is how you play on that Sunday. So you've got to wake up and you've got to knock off those cobwebs because one thing is these guys will have, you know, four solid days off without, you know, being around us as coaches or hearing our voices. You know, four days, again, this season's like four months. It just is. And you come back and that Monday practice we'll have, that's very necessary to go ahead and just make sure everybody gets woken up, knocks off some rust, has a good day on the field, and that that can transfer going forward. Thanks. And one more. Um, you know how coaches very often and sometimes you hear players say, well, he's not a rookie anymore, mm -hmm. right? You know, we played 10 games. He's not a rookie anymore. Are your rookies still rookies? Do you, you know, what is that mindset? And do you subscribe to that mindset? You know, I mean, you, you could kind of phrase that two different ways on that. I know what you're saying with that. Um, look, I expect marked improvement from our team along the way. So the so-called rookie mistakes, I don't care if it's a rookie making or a vet making it, I just don't expect to see it repeated. Um, so that's what we're really holding everyone accountable for, that things are going to happen. Um, we just have to learn from them and move forward. You know, I think right at this point right now, our young players obviously have a different uh, perspective and a different taste for the speed of the game and what goes in week by week. You hear a lot about these rookie walls. We've talked a lot to our rookies about it, talked to rookies in the past about it as well. To me, it's important to have these rookies understand that, look, really right now we're at a point where the college football season's winding down and about to be over, or at least in a normal year it would be. And, you know, your season's very much still going. Okay, we've got a lot of ball left to play. You know, in a normal season, by the time you get to week eight, that is a college season. That's four preseason games. It's eight games. You're looking at 12. Maybe you play a bowl game after that. You know, go get a you know, little Caesars pizza bowl thing and, you know, go back home for Christmas and stuff. But, you know, this season here, it's you've got to refuel and get going. You've got to make sure that you handle your routine throughout the season effectively, that physically you don't break down, that mentally you don't fatigue. And to me, that comes into having a good established routine, but then also at some point in the year, changing up your routine to change the stimulation. So if you're a guy that's always watching tape, you know, mid-afternoon, okay, maybe it's an early morning thing and get your workout in mid-afternoon. But you got to change things up a little bit throughout the season, not to have that monotony that kind of wears you down to the point where you think you're being productive just because you have activity. You've got to make sure you're actually taking steps forward every time you do something. But, you know, we're not right in the past for any of our guys, whether they're rookies, vets, whatever they are. 
in terms of repeat mistakes. We got to make sure as coaches we do a good job of eliminating those. I wanted to ask you about Will Hernandez and obviously everything you you know he's gone through the last couple of weeks. You come into Sunday. I mean, it, it seemed clear that you had a a plan that he wasn't necessarily going to get snaps. At least that's my perspective. And then Zeitler goes out. What did you see from Will uh, in the game coming in? And then uh, is it a challenge this week knowing that you're, you're not in the building with these guys? That how can you gauge how he's coming out of this weekend? First opportunity being out there on the field. Yeah. So the best feedback we get as far as how he came out of this weekend is from the trainers and the strength coaches. So we're not in the building. What we have done is. We're doing very small group workouts that are going to be available to our players um, that they want to come and get something physical. It's obviously we've had to do a lot of maneuvering to make sure that it's very limited people in the field house working out or running on the fields very spread out. We're taking a lot of precautions in that. But the feedback I'll get from the trainers and strength coach would be the most valuable feedback that I can get on those guys. Um, but what I saw when he went in the game was a guy who was ready. You know, I saw Will went in there. He was, he was mentally, physically, and emotionally ready to go. Um, Obviously, two weeks off from a game, it's a lot to ask anyone to jump right back, you know, in the swing of things and go through an entire game. Uh, but when we needed him, he came through. I thought he played well, he played tough. Uh, you know, it's just kind of Will's personality coming out at the end of the game right there. Uh, kind of goes in as a little bit of the enforcer when we need him right there. So, look, I was pleased to see Will at the game. It's good to have him back in the building. He's always a dude that makes everyone smile when he's around. So, it's just good to have him back with us. Do you feel like now, I mean, I know you have some time away. Do you feel like when you come back on Monday, that the last couple of weeks are, are behind him and you could actually move forward? Or is that kind of still a wait and see and see how this progresses? Yeah, I think it's still wait and see to see him on the field Monday, Art, to be honest with you, to be fair to him. Because now if we had practiced the last two days, if we're out there today, I think I'd have a much better view on that and an answer for that. Not being able to see him with my own eyes and really put him through a practice, that's a tough thing to evaluate and gauge. But he says he's feeling better. I don't want to speak for the player. I guess I just did. Uh, but, you know, look, I want to make sure that we make the right evaluation for him at all times. These guys are tough guys. They're competitive guys. Sometimes they say things, and uh, you got to make sure that, you know, you really gauge and make the best decision for them. Thanks, Joe. Jordan. Hey, Joe, you got a bunch of guys uh, on the verge of returning, right, off injured reserve or whatever. Uh, what's their status, you know, coming off the bye? I mean, you got, what, Tay Crowder, Zimenez, uh, McKinney, and I guess Ryan Lewis? Yeah, so again, that kind of falls back in Art's question a little bit. I was really counting on seeing a little bit of those guys this week. Um, obviously, we can't see them on the field football-wise this week. Monday will be an important day for us, Jordan, to kind of take a look at a lot of these guys moving around. We still have to make a declaration on a couple of those guys in terms of starting their clock. Um, but we're going to have to evaluate you know, these guys next week and see where they are going in Cincinnati. Uh, we're optimistic we should see the majority of those guys, if not all of them, at some point down this stretch. Uh, they've all made progress. They're all working very hard with their trainers. And uh, I know they're a lot further ahead now than they were when they initially went on IR. We just got to see how close they are to game action for us. And for you personally, I mean, do you decompress? Do you take any time off at the end of this week? Or you just plow through and you'll worry about that after the season? Yeah, I'll definitely structure good family time this weekend. I mean, I've got a laundry list of stuff right now that I'm loading up on and making sure I stay ahead on. I'm using a lot of this time right now not only to uh, self-scout and catch up on things that we've done throughout the season. Uh, the coaches have done a lot of really good research and reports and kind of give me good feedback on where we have to go going forward. That's been very valuable. I'm trying to jump ahead on all of our opponents and get a head start, which will help me down this final stretch as far as watching some tape. Um, but look, I, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say that, you know, when this weekend rolls around, there's going to be a point where I got to dive in and be dad again. So, you know, I've got to dive in with the kids and give them all, you know, my undivided attention. Um, I'll probably be way more worn out from that than I am from a week of game prep. Um, but it's something we're looking forward to right there. So that'll kind of reset the motor right there for us and uh, get us moving through the final six. Last one here, Tom Rock. Joe, have you talked to uh, Graham? How is how is he feeling? And uh, what can you tell us about uh, Santoso? Yeah, so I'll start with Ryan. Listen, Ryan's a guy who's got a huge leg. He's shown a tremendous amount of improvement since he's been here. I think this guy, you know, it's a unique skill set that he does all three, field goals, kickoffs, and punts. He's shown a lot of improvement in all three phases through being here. I think Tom and T-Mac do a tremendous job of working with this guy. Uh, look, this guy's a mentally tough guy, too. He, he's one of my favorite guys on the practice field. He kicks for us in kicking periods, obviously. Does a lot of his field goal operation work on Fridays with the team. Um, you know, me and him normally have some kind of side bets going on as he's kicking, kind of put a little pressure on it. And uh, I think he's a little bit better in terms of, you know, really roping that thing through the uprights when I'm talking a little smack behind him. So, 
look, we have a lot of confidence in Ryan right there. Um, he's definitely a developing player. I think he's got a big upside in this league for a long time. I really do. Uh, I'm pleased he's been in our program. We've been able to hold on to him through this point right here. Um, I'm really pleased with the work Tom and T-Mac have done with him. And if he's got to go, we have a lot of confidence that he'll be able to go out there and do the job effectively. You know, Graham, uh, again, he's talked to Ronnie today. I touched base with him yesterday. You know, I, I don't want to speak for him in terms of how he may feel with this. Uh, I don't know all the stages of this virus personally, so I don't know if this is something that increases, decreases. I don't want to speak for any of the players right here. I know, obviously, our trainers are communicating with him on a regular basis uh, to make sure that his welfare is okay. And, um, and I'll touch base with him again later today like I do with most of the players. Do you expect to have him back in time for the next game? You know, there's a timetable with that. Uh, th there's an opportunity for that, Tom, but there's some other things that go into that as well. Uh, are there any setbacks in this in that time window? Where does the physician clear them? There's a ramp up period, and then again, him like everybody else, we have to be fair to this guy sitting in a hotel room, all right, for a couple of weeks. You know, is it fair to him to put him on the field and ask him to go ahead and do his job? That's these are all things that we have to account for. You know, in fantasy football, like yeah, put it in, plug him in, we're good to go. But in reality, are we doing the fair thing by him individually and the team collectively to take someone who hasn't had two weeks of an opportunity to prepare to put him out there to do a job?